I'm very excited to be with you this morning, and I appreciate uh, being given the opportunity to kind of show you some of the work that we've been doing on psoriasis over the past, actually, uh, getting over 25 years. Uh, so, so what I'm going to talk to uh, this morning is about new insight in the pathogenesis of psoriasis. It's a little bit heavy on the genetics, but closely kind of tied into the immunology. These are my conflicts of interests. So I know everybody in this room is very familiar with, with, with psoriasis, and you can see some of the clinical photos there on the left on the slide. These are patients that I've seen in the clinic over the years, uh, and, and kind of just gives you an idea how variable and, and often devastating this disease is when, when, it, when it arises. And it's, it never ceases to fascinate me how variable the disease is. We call it chronic plaque psoriasis, but it's, it's very and highly variable in terms of the, the redness, the scaling, the thickness, and even the appearance. What's actually quite striking about psoriasis is this kind of a, the histological features of psoriasis that you can see here on the right. And, and this kind of shows you the, uh, the transition from an uninvolved distant skin to the uninvolved near edge, the plaque center, then the active edge of psoriasis. And you can kind of appreciate the dramatic changes that happen in the, uh, in the skin, and particularly the epidermis. You get this very marked thickening, about tenfold thickening of the epidermis, marked influx of inflammatory cells, vascular ingrowth, and, and this um, very marked scaling and, and, and neutrophil kind of microapsis that you can typically see in the active edge of psoriasis. What's even more fascinating is that when you treat this, this disease, this all goes away, and you practically end up with what often looks like a perfectly normal skin, so there's no scarring uh, involved. And because this process actually is quite similar to what you can see in wound healing, this has sometimes been kind of a termed uh, regenerative maturation. So it's not a, a random process that is going on, it's like it's a highly organized process that is kind of like being engaged in psoriasis to kind of lead to this um, epidermal changes. It's also good to kind of appreciate that psoriasis is really a, a spectrum of diseases, a spectrum of clinical phenotypes. And what I show you here is, is, is some of the photos that I've taken of my patients in the clinic over the years, but on one end you have plaque psoriasis, which truly is a TH17 dominant disease. And then on the other end, on the extreme end, uh, on the other side that my colleague is going to be speaking about next is generalized pustular psoriasis, where you really have much less of a, of a TH17 signal, but really you're, you're dominated by an, an, an innate IL-36 driven uh, disease process. But it's good to kind of appreciate that we have all these other clinical subtypes of psoriasis kind of in between. Uh, and it's kind of like a variable mix of, 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 of uh, T-cell cytokines and, and, and then the innate cytokines that are really kind of dictating the, the clinical phenotype. And our understanding of, of what's going on in those subtypes actually is, is, is pretty limited. So what I'm going to be talking about is, is really what we know about chronic plaque psoriasis in the, f the following slides of my uh, uh, talk. So it's a complex pathogenesis. Um, there are predisposing factors involved There's, uh, that have to do with disease initiation and disease maintenance. Um, you can see here on the uh, image on the right, kind of a really kind of demonstrating the, uh, the phases of, of, of psoriasis or auto and autoimmune diseases in general. You have to have that initiation, and that co kind of comes down to genetic predisposition and obviously also environmental triggers because not everybody that has the right genetic makeup to get the disease actually ends up with psoriasis. Uh, so you need some kind of a trigger. And then uh, in, and in psoriasis, we now know over 150 genetic variants that actually predispose to psoriasis. And then at some point you kind of get into the propagation, the disease kind of becomes clinical manifest. And then you kind of have uh, kind of a disease or immunological processes that kind of tend to sustain the disease through cytokine production, epitope spreading, and also perhaps uh, disrupted T affected T regulatory kind of a balance. And then the thing that we are really and typically missing in psoriasis is really the resolution phase. Uh, we know that from our patients, most of them will never have a, a remission. It's a chronic disease. Um, and, and in terms of the links to the uh, immunology, uh, and, and particularly the link between the genetic and immunology is not well established yet, but there are possible roles in interferon antiviral signaling, epidermal differentiation, auto-inflammatory responses, and obviously IL-23, IL-17 IL responses play a major role, antigen presentation, TNF, nf kappa b signaling, and then T-cell development, like I will get to in a, in, in a little bit. 
Uh, this shows you kind of the, the genetic signals that we have identified in psoriasis. This shows you uh, the signal across the 22 autosomal, aut autosomes in the, uh, the human genome. You can see a lot of green and red peaks. So this is where the status is, and the, the one that really goes up to a p-value or something between one in the power of 1,500 to 2,000 is the hlc 6 variant on MHC, uh, in the MHC region on chromosome 6. Um, and then uh, many of these kind of a genetic signal kind of are localized to fairly specific functions, and, and that includes response to stimulus, lymphocyte differentiation regulation, regulation of anti-kappa B cascade, uh, adaptive immune responses, and then also type 1 interferon responses. And it's quite helpful. This is actually, you know, where we have kind of tried to link together the genetics with the single cell data. And what you have here is a, is a heat map, and I, I apologize, it, it's fairly complex. You have the genes here on this end, and then you have the different cell types. But what you can see is that when you look and where you kind of map the genetic signal onto the cell types, you begin to kind of see you know, patterns. So you have these kind of genetic locus that are linked to T cells, dendritic myeloid cells, uh, keratinocytes is a major cluster, and then also fibroblasts. So it, it really tells you that psoriasis is a multifactorial, uh, multicellular kind of a disease process. If you look at, you know, where most of the crosstalk in, in psoriasis, where's most of the communication between the immune cells and the stromal cells happening, it's only between four different cell types in psoriasis, the keratinocytes, the fibroblast, the myeloid cells, and T cells. These are the ones that are responsible for most of the lichen receptor pairs that we see in psoriasis. And this is, again, using single cell as a tool to try to understand psoriasis a little bit better. Uh, you can see that using the spatial seek that these kind of co-localize in the epidermis. You have the keratinocytes here. Most of the immune cells are kind of right underneath. And these are in close proximity using these kind of a neighborhood type type analyses. And then if you look at, you know, how are these cells kind of talking together in terms of the cytokines and the chemokines, you get a very kind of a dynamic network of, of, of interactions where the keratinocytes are feeding into the other three cell types through multiple chemokines uh, and, and cytokines. How the fibroblasts are communicating with the other cells, the myeloid cells and the T cells. So it's a really very complex crosstalk that really drives the disease process. It's also interesting to kind of uh, look and, and, and think, you know, we have all these genetic variants that predispose to psoriasis, but really where are these genetic variants acting in the skin? And this is another way where the, um, the spatial sequencing can actually be very helpful. So we're looking at a gene expression across the tissue here, and we have kind of overlaid the, uh, the single cell sequences and, and signatures onto the map. And you can appreciate the keratinocytes that are right here on top, and then you get the other cell types here in the, uh, the dermis and the epidermis. And then if you look at where is the genetic signal really mapping, no surprise, it's actually right there in the epidermis and the epidermal dermal junction. That's where the activity and the action is really is going on in psoriasis. That's where the disease process is, is, is happening. Uh, it's also very useful to kind of look at, you know, in terms of the cytokines. We know psoriasis is a cytokine-driven disease. It's been proven in, in the clinical trials that we have. Started. And this is kind of looking at the enrichment of the specific uh, signatures of the cytokines. So it's not looking at the expression of the uh, cytokines themselves, but the signal that they activate in the skin. And then this is the observed to ex expected kind of value. What you can see here is that if you look at the ones that are most enriched, it's actually IL-17A and TNF signal. But there are also uh, quite a few other very inter interesting ones. You have the interference here that are enriched in, in, in psoriasis and the psoriasis genetic signals, and then IL-36. So these are really and truly the, the three cytokine drivers of, of, of psoriasis. And what you can do is, is this is kind of looking at lesional severity of psoriasis. So we're looking at the individual lesion in terms of the redness, the thickness, and the scaling, and we're kind of grading that in terms of um, the severity. So normally you have that, that here on the... Um, on the um, on the left uh, and, and, and right, and then it's the G1, G2, G3, and G4. So G4 is the most severe, the thickest, scaliest, reddest kind of a lesion. And when you do that, and you're looking at the inflammatory cytokine signatures in psoriasis, you can see that IL-17A is, is highly enriched. And if you look at the difference in severities compared to normal, you can see much where most of the uh, IL-17A signal is. If you're just comparing the different severities between themselves, you can see there's an IL-17A signal, but much less than actually in the disease itself. If you kind of look at 
the disease versus normal itself, that's where the interferon signal is. But the R36 signal is really in terms of the severity. So the more severe the plaque lesion is, the higher the R36 signal is. So it has more to do with amplification of the inflammatory signal in, 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 in psoriasis. So you can kind of think about it like, like, like this. So across the different severities of, of psoriasis, it's really IL-17A and TNF that kind of define the disease. Same with the interferons, both type 1 and type 2 interferons. It more has to do with the disease presence. And then it's the IL-36 signal that has much more to do with the disease severity, the amplification of the psoriasis in the epidermis. If you look at where in the skin, the epidermis is not all the same. Uh, you know, where is the signal kind of happening in the uh, in, 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 in psoriatic epidermis? So this is, again, using single-cell seek data. So we're looking at keratinocytes in the normal healthy skin shown in red, the non-lesional psoriasis skin shown in green, and then lesional psoriasis skin shown in, 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 in blue. And then we're looking at the different epidermal compartments, the basal, the spinous, and the supraspinous compartment. What you can appreciate if you look at the interferon alpha score, it's actually highest in the basal layer of the epidermis. IL-17A is in the supraspinous compartment, same with TNF and IL-36. So it kind of gives you an idea that there's this kind of compartmentalization going on in the uh, epidermis and psoriasis. And that's also, if you look at where things are most active, and particularly the IL-36 activity, it really is happening in the supraspinous compartment of the epidermis. That's where you're really getting that amplification of the immune response. And kind of going back and kind of tying together the, the, uh, the, the psoriasis and the immunogenetics of psoriasis. So what I have here is, is you have, you know, the dendritic cells, you have the TH17 and TC17 cells over here, and then the TH17 cytokines over here. You have the different genetic risk variants that predispose to the disease shown in the boxes, including oxidative responses, IL-23 signaling, TH17 differentiation and responses. Uh, and then the, the downstream effect here on the keratinocytes where you have that amplification circuit that is, is highly active in, um, in, in, in psoriasis and really is even more amplified by IL-36. You also have the, the TH1 axis of inflammation that involves uh, interferon gamma through uh, TH1 and TC1 cells. There are multiple different genetic variants that kind of lie on that end of the image spectrum. And then you have the type 1 interference, uh, particularly the uh, plasma cytoid dendritic cells that we know have been implicated in triggering of psoriasis. It's also interesting, you know, we, we never talk about interferon gamma in psoriasis, and, 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 but there's a very, you know, clear role for interferon gamma, at least in, in plaque psoriasis. You know, psoriasis, uh, plaque psoriasis is, is an autoimmune disease. The strongest genetic signal that we have is MHC class 1 in some of these uh, genes that are involved in antigen processing and, and presentation. So what you have here on the left is the MHC class 1 pathway. I'm showing you MHC class 1, HLAC W6. We have four different risk genes involving in this signaling pathway. You have the ERB1 and ERB2, which are involved through aminopeptidases. They have a role in trimming of, of amino acid peptides. And then uh, if you look at where they're expressed in the psoriatic epidermis, they're actually highly expressed particularly in the, uh, the basal layer of the epidermis. And if you look at the cytokine signals that really activate this uh, mechanism in psoriasis, it, it really is much more interferon gamma, the type 2 cytokines, than IL-17 or TNF. TH1 also has a role in terms of amplifying uh, IL-17 responses. So this is a study that we published about 15 years ago in JI. Um, what we showed is that if, even if you take normal, healthy antigen presenting cells and you prime them in interferon gamma, you get a lot more IL-17 positive T cells in the co-culture system. If you use uh, psoriatic antigen presenting cells, you get even more, and interferon gamma really amplifies that, both in terms of proportion of TH17 cells and also in terms of IL-17 production. Interferon gamma primes keratinocytes to make more CCL20, which is the key chemokine that brings in TH17 cells into the skin, and it also amplifies production of antimicrobial peptides such as human beta defensin 2. So really, interferon gamma acts with IL-17 in psoriasis to kind of amplify inflammation. So kind of going back to this, and again, it's a very complex slide, um, but it can be quite kind of informative in terms of how we look at psoriasis. You have the TH17 arm over here and the, uh, the interferon gamma, and this is really is the establishment of the disease or maintenance of disease. The plasma cytoid dendritic cells are much more in terms of the triggering of the disease, the unstable psoriasis that you see in the clinic. 
And then the IL-36 axis is really has much more to do with the lesional severity of the disease, and, and, and particularly when it kind of gets out of control, the generalized pustular psoriasis variant of, this, of the disease. So kind of going back to kind of summarize, so psoriasis is a complex genetic disease involving multiple immune and stromal cell populations, which, which the crosstox drives the disease process. Cytokine signaling is a critical circuit in psoriasis pathogenesis, uh, and it's well established based on the clinical trials that we have that IL-23 and IL-17 are really and truly the critical cytokines in the, the disease mechanism. They really are the ones that define psoriasis as an IL-17-centric disease. Type 2 interference, particularly interferon gamma, is a key part of psoriasis and likely helps to both amplify IL-17 inflammation and also may drive the autoimmune component of plaque psoriasis, the uh, antigen presentation and processing. Uh, and it's IL-36 that is a very interesting cytokine that has a role in the feed-forward amplification of psoriasis and really contributes to lesional, lesional severity in plaque psoriasis. Um, so it's my, you know, based on what we have learned, and I think we still have a lot to learn about, about psoriasis, but it really is the, the immunogenetics of psoriasis that are really going to transform our view of psoriasis and how we treat this disease. Uh, so thank you for listening, and I just want to acknowledge uh, some of my colleagues that I've really have been working with for over the past quarter of a century on, on psoriasis. Uh, and also I, I want to acknowledge all the funding sources that I've had over the years to kind of support my work. So thank you for listening, and if there's time, I'm happy to take questions.